What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with So Men's Comics, and we are back again with those comic market trends for the week. That's right, we're talking about three up, three down, giving you three up trends and three down trends. But before we get into it, Jack, it's early in the week, but how's it going so far? So far, so good. Definitely a busy week already, but the comic market's busy as well. So things are moving up. Uh, we've got some downtrends to talk about, and it'd be interesting to see what the rest of the community's take is on things that are moving up, things that are moving down. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's Tuesday, and I'm ready for the weekend. I got tired in my eyes, pretty much. But either way, always happy to be here recording that. Do want to give a big shout out to someone that helped me collect a one of one collectible. Been wanting this for a while. Got this in the mail today. So I want to give a shout out. I'm just going to say, my angel in Georgia, thank you so much for hooking me up. But Either way, let's get into the hot trends. Right now, starting with Kang, we got some casting news, right? That's right. Um, definitely, definitely uh, got the comic market buzzing. We've been talking about Kang the Conqueror for a couple of years. There were a lot of people that thought that he was going to play into a lot of the previous phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, a lot of people were speculating about Avengers Forever, possibly for you know the previous movies. That didn't come to be, but now we know that we are getting the star of the brand new hit series, uh, Lovecraft Count, what's it, Lovecraft Country County um, on uh, uh, HBO, um, starring as Kang the Conqueror uh, in the MCU in Ant-Man 3. Um, first off, I think this raises the value of Ant-Man 3 as a movie. I think it gets a lot more people excited for that franchise than would typically be excited for it because Kang is a big time villain. So probably not a villain you're looking at for just a single movie, uh, similar to the way Ghost was in the second movie where it kind of felt a little villain of the week maybe. Um, but this is definitely a bigger villain. And also it hints strongly, and I could easily say just as hot as Kang, we could have had Young Avengers listed because it really strongly hints that the Young Avengers are coming. And this is something that's going to get a lot of comic speculators and investors excited um, a lot of people have been speculating for a long time on uh, everything from Kate Bishop to all of the other characters, America Chavez, the newer incarnation of um, the Young Avengers, uh, the original Young Avengers characters. So a lot of books are spiking post this announcement. Did you say Lovecraft Mac and Cheese? Because I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love, love Craft Mac and Cheese is better than that fancy stuff. I'm telling you that. Even <laughs> the great value it. version. It's the best. But either way, the next one we're talking about, this is one that we even talked about on FOC. This is one we identified. And since then, I mean, they've always had hot brands for this. So it's not just for the one we talked about on FOC. But let's just get to it. We're talking about Ice Cream Man and those B variants that always come out for it. Yeah, like you got to really go back into the back issues and start noticing that there's a trend that's been going on. Um, first off, I really have to commend the editorial team for that book. You're talking about an anthology series. So each issue is a, really a standalone story. Um, you, you get all them number ones. <laughs> yeah, it really, yeah, really, it makes you approach each issue as a number one. Um, there isn't the same continuity there. But it also gives you a lot of freedom. And that freedom has been really expressed on the B covers. Uh, and the B covers, in, uh, the A covers have been nice, I think, as well. But the B covers have really been stunning because they've got to do things like we saw recently where play with uh, Dr. Seuss cover homages. And if you've read Ice Cream Man, you're talking about a horrific, gory story that, uh, you know, then plays with the juxtaposition of these children's stories that are so iconic that we all know. Um, and then even just some of, like, the different artistic talents that they brought in to do cover B, some of the, like, almost high-end art concept art that we've seen, similar to, like, uh, the upcoming Sorrentino variant for uh, um, Ice Cream Man 21. These types of books are seeing secondary market heat. So we're seeing almost immediately upon release, these books start to go over cover price. We're starting to see them hit $10, $15 a good month after release uh, or more. Uh, some of them are over $20. And this has been consistent now for about six to eight months. So this is something to pay attention to. I think this series is a monster. I know it's supposed to be coming out on Quibi. I, I'm not a big fan of that platform. Um, I think that there's larger life for Ice Cream Man, I would hope. But either way, I, I really like this series. I think it's going to be a big long-term hit. And 
the, these prices are undeniable. And it's one of those things that people may not be aware of. So this is one of those ones where do some eBay research and then hit your LCS, see what they've still got in stock. Cause there's a good chance they've got a lot of these left for cover price. Yeah. We always talked about how, I mean, that trend, right? Horror comics, were, they've, were, they've been yeah. hot. Ice Cream Man came around right when that trend was coming back up again. And we're hitting Halloween, so a lot of people start liking those books even yeah. more. So given that those B covers are fantastic, just like you mentioned, a lot of those covers might not have much to do with the story. It's just, hey, it's a funny take on art. And it makes people collect those. Some fantastic comics out there. But the last one we want to talk about for three up, we opened with Kang. We're going to go back to another character, and we're talking about Sentry. Yeah, and so we're talking about Kang from an MCU movie casting news. That's why that character is hot. Sentry is just as hot right now, um, seeing prices escalate from about $75 for that Sentry number one first appearance up to $200 that we're seeing as of the moment that we're filming this. Um, that is just ungodly. Cray. <laughs> right. And it, it all comes from a tweet. And not even a tweet. Within a tweet, a hashtag, hashtag Sentry, in Ryan Stegman's tweet about King and Black, the upcoming miniseries that has the entire comic market buzzing, us included. We're very excited for King and Black. Um, to me, that's going to be like the culmination of this whole Null story, bringing in the rest of the Marvel Universe, not making it just simply a Venom story, but making it a really, making Null a big bad to the scope of Galactus or um, Thanos, I think that is going to be a big deal. But now there's all this speculation of where Sentry ties in. Some people thinking Sentry is Null or Sentry is this character, Sentry is that character. I got to be honest with you, I highly doubt a series artist would spoil it that simply in a hashtag. Um, I'm sure the hashtag didn't mean nothing. Um, and what I mean yeah. by that double negative is, is there's something there. But um, I'm sure Sentry will be involved somehow. So I don't think the, and I think also Sentry is a good character to invest in, but these overnight triplings in value, uh, yeah, that, that there's nothing to me that's, that's kind of like concrete enough to go and spend three times what I would have spent yesterday. Um, so the book is hot. The character is hot. We definitely have to talk about it. Um, it's definitely worth noting. If you've got some Sentry, you may even think maybe now's the time to sell. Um, but I, I think this is a character that could play out a movie one day, very largely. So um, I think I would be holding off for something a bit more concrete. Yeah. And since Ryan Stegman watches this video all the time, next time you tweet out, can you put in there hashtag simple man's comics, exclusive variants? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know if Ryan watches this or not, but if it, if I, say, you know something cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool. And speaking of simple man's comics, exclusive variants, we have some up on the site right now, don't we? Oh, that's right. You know, we said we were going to keep the action rolling with these exclusive variants. So head to simplementscomics.com. Check out all of the exclusive variants we've got available right now. We're talking uh, independent creator-owned books from Tom Taylor and Al Ewing through Boom Studios. We're talking Seven Secrets. We only find them when they're dead. We're talking Mad Cave Studios um, with Stargazer number one. Sold out everywhere, by the way. You can't get Stargazer in a comic shop, but you can get it at simplementscomics.com. Uh, we've got some awesome IDW stuff, G.I. Joe 275, big landmark issue, TMNT 110, um, and so much more coming this week, next week, yeah. the week after. We can't wait to show you guys what we have in store. Especially if you're a G.I. Joe fan who listens to Wu-Tang. Yes, there's something very special we can't wait to show you. Either way, we've discussed the up portion. Let's get into the down portion. The first one we're talking about is... Marry me. No, really, that's that's the name of the book. So we're cheating here by putting this one as a down. I mean, this has every reason to be hot. Um, now, the if you were looking at the prices, the prices are, and I'll say the prices, the prices people are asking on eBay frequently are forty, fifty dollars, stuff like that. No one's buying it though. There's no sales. There are some occasional sales, very cheap for some of the variants, ten dollars. Um, for Marry Me number one, uh, a couple cover price number one sales, which are, that's an, inc an incredible steal. Um, but if you're not familiar with Marry Me, it comes from the small pu press publisher Keen Spot. Um, and it has been optioned for a movie. It has been developed. It has been shot. Um, and 
it is ready to release on Valentine's Day 2021. It stars uh, Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson, uh, who famously did a film together, uh, The Wedding Planner, some like a decade ago that I know is really big hit within the, um, within the, you know, rom-com community. And I, okay, I admit, here's the thing, guilty pleasure, if I'm like putting something on to go to sleep to, I kind of like romantic comedies. It's kind of one of those things. It's kind of like, it's kind of one of those things like I, I, I kind of like. Um, the tissues. No, you didn't. You didn't. Listen, if you've, if you've been like me, you've had a couple tumultuous relationships. It's nice to watch one that kind of works out perfectly. So it's one of those things where I enjoy rom-coms as much as the next person. But I don't know if I ever truly see rom-com comics um inspiring speculation inspiring financial growth there's another one coming out um with not, think, not unless you're talking like golden age right and there's another one coming out with like the that star gonna star the rock and i think emily blunt um and it's another one where like i don't know uh, is that called jungle cruise and, uh, they're doing another one like Ball oh. and, Chain, <laughs> and it's and it's another one where um i don't know if that's gonna you know, that's going to fly. I think you watch rom-coms when you go to sleep and that's your dream right there. There's, there's this rom-com with Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> it's, it's called ball. It's called ball and chain. It's your fan cast. We've, we've talked about it. I know we have. The channel. I was giving Jack a hard time. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know that these books are ever going to go. And when Brian and I talked about this one before, you know, and I, my reasoning for saying, well, maybe it has a chance is, well, you know, the, the wedding planner was an iconic movie and it was, but Brian made a great point when he said to me, what do you think the wedding planner comic would be worth any money today? And the truth is no, I don't. So um, while I think this is cool, if you're a scarcity guy, this is certainly a scarce book. Yeah. And especially uh, coming from Keen spot. Right. And then there is even uh, if, if you go to their Keen Spots website, issue number seven, there is a uh, My Little Pony parody, a parody variant that they only printed 55 copies of that's still available for sale on their website for $10. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it's the biggest movie in the world and we're all wrong, but it yeah. would probably take that. Yeah, I'll take being wrong. And if I'm going to Keen Spot, I'm not getting Marry Me. I'm getting them, them old fart night, <laughs> them fart night books. <laughs> <laughs> and jack talks about rom-coms i will fully admit back in the day wednesday night cw dawson's creek and felicity was my jam oh yeah oh yeah i'm a creaker <laughs> go pacey <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> but the next one i want to talk about on the three down this week everyone everyone hates a tease and we are talking about those creator teases that we're getting all the time now no you're absolutely right brian don't tease me. Give me the goods. But that is not what's going on these days on social media, especially where it comes to creators and creator-owned comics. We are seeing a lot of teases being put out by creators that get the secondary market all excited and behind books without any real concrete information. Now, we just talked about a book from Keen Spot, an uh, independent creator-owned book that got uh, optioned and developed. It's already ready for release this February. But before it got to that process, it had to get optioned. Um, then it had to get developed, produced. Uh, they had to get somebody to write the script, get somebody to direct, uh, cast the film, shoot the film, um, edit the film, produce a trailer, all of those steps before you get ready for distribution, which used to be one of the easiest parts of the process. And now is one of the most difficult as you have to navigate a kind of post COVID-19 landscape. Um, and with all of that going on, um, it's funny how the option part, which is the part that spikes the comic seemingly the most is the very first step in that process. It really does not indicate that a, Property is going to become a television show or movie. Brian and I have talked frequently about one of our favorites, Southern Bastards, which got optioned by FX way back in like 2015. Um, and we're still waiting on that show from FX, but the option is supposedly still active. So they just keep renewing it without any plan to put things out. And that's what is going on when creators tease things. It's just we've seen wind spike full of te teases from James Tynan. We saw a tomahawk spike with uh, teases from Donny Cates. And we don't really know what these teases really imply. 
um, whether or not we're looking at TV shows, movies, further uh, printing. Um, and sometimes some of these teases are specific, but they end up seeing spikes in the market. And it's one of those things we've talked to other creators um, who have been in the space who almost feel uncomfortable with this. Uh, there's a lot of these, you know, creators who are involved in these discussions and negotiations that involve NDAs and um, that once it gets far, far down the line, um, you really don't want to be teasing things. So a lot of times the stuff you're seeing teased isn't really the stuff that's really that far down the line in the first place. So a lot of that teasing can kind of be um, detrimental to the market. Uh, but oftentimes it's in the creator's uh kind of benefit because it creates buzz. Now, I'm not saying Donnie Cates and James Tynan are doing that because those are two gentlemen who don't need to do that at all. They're the two hottest in the game, which is why I use them as an example because they're kind of Teflon to this argument. But there are certainly other creators who use that as a crutch in order to kind of stay relevant and stay kind of talked about, especially where it comes to their creator-owned properties. So the last one we're talking about in this video tonight, the last downward trend as well. And the book is still way up. The story is still way up. And people are going to be like, there's no way this is cold. And we are talking about Kanto. Yeah, we're not talking about Kanto, the character, Kanto, the story, even Kanto on the secondary market. We're simply talking about yet again, another printing fiasco surrounding the Kanto comic. Now, here's what you have to understand about what's going on. Now, this is a lot of the same of what we're seeing uh, from the very first issue in the very first volume of Kanto. We have a, uh, a line-wide uh, printing error that goes across all copies of the book, um, at certain covers, and we'll talk about that. But um, it, there hasn't been a lot of communication from IDW. Like, and when I say a lot, let's be honest, there haven't been any. Um, so the market has been kind of left to figure this out for themselves. And it took about a week. Um, and what, what we're talking about is every single uh, incentive variant or retailer exclusive variant was missing key pages to the story. And, and the, basically the back of the book was all jumbled up. Yeah. Um, it, had, it, had, it had like the splash not, page in the back as well. Right. And, and missing is, a page out of the story. And this is not a, um, this is not something that got caught immediately and, Right, kind of rightfully so, because people don't read incentive variants. People aren't reading retail or exclusive variants. These are collectible items. They're bought um, for their cover value, for for the collectability sake. They're kept in bags and boards. They're sent off to CGC, CBCS, and God forbid PGX. Um, and it's just one of those things where this took a while to get caught, and once it it did, people started looking around, realizing this happened with all the incentives and all of the retailer exclusive variants. Um, so this is a mistake. And if you're not familiar with how the comic publishing, uh, the printing part of the comic publishing business works, IDW doesn't print books. Uh, Marvel doesn't print books. DC doesn't, nobody prints books. Um, they publish the books and then they deal usually through a third party vendor who helps them to acquire printing printers to then do uh, their printing jobs. So the, these are, are, you know, contracted uh, relationships. And oftentimes these printers who print a vast number of, of projects, they're not used to the collectible market that involves comics where damages are a big deal um, and misprints are a huge deal. And there's a lack of quality control. There's not a person set in in this process to check. So the books get printed at some third party printer. They get sent off to Diamond. Diamond ships them out to stores, and then it's up to the stores to figure out if something's wrong. And again, because these were incentives and exclusives, they weren't really checked for, you know, you had to go through 85% of the book to find the problem in the first place, and you weren't going to find that in those types of covers. And there was nothing wrong with the cover A of this book. So is Canto down? No. Um is IDW down? I, I don't know. I can't blame IDW for the printing error. I blame IDW for the lack of communication. It's unfortunate that their flagship creator-owned property, Now I say that with a strong F, flagship. This is the, the brand. I know they want to lock and key is their thing, okay? But that is a story that at this point you are 
cashing out on it. You're getting whatever money you can get for it. Canto is your next up, your next big property that you've got on, on your brand. And um, I think they're not showing the, the amount of fans and supporters of this um, book enough love by communicating about what happened. So what, what is the result of this is Diamond is getting replacements um, to ship to retailers for all of the retailer uh, incentives. Um, so there's going to end up being double the amount of incentives on the market, but essentially two versions. There's going to be an error version and a corrected version. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. CGC and CBCS will annotate that, right? right? We need that to happen because I think it's going to matter. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see because we don't want just double the books in the market, and it's going to be very interesting to see. Does the market prefer an error version? Do they prefer a corrected version? Um, you know, is one rarer than the other, even though they were printed with the exact same quantity? Things happen, books get destroyed, damages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and time is going to tell. And either way, we're, Canto is getting this very unique story where it's like, you know, the first book was printed, line wide damage. Um, that should have halted all success of this book, did not. This book is a juggernaut. Come up here now damage on in the most i mean just amazing incentives that one in 25 stained glass incentive is gorgeous um that one in 10 ben bishop uh homage tmnt number one is money um and for those all to have not been to the quality that the creators of the book certainly deserve uh it is unfortunate it's unfortunate that that's that's how it went down but for that reason it, it has to be down but will it stay down that's the question so what we want to know from you guys in the simple Men's comics family in the community out there let us know in the comments section where do you see this all shaking out um would you rather have an error version or a corrected version do you want both in your collection um, and if you have you the know, incentive are you going to take it back to your comic book store and ask for the, the new the new version which is another whole thing we talked about about is will these books get replaced for customers will they just get sold by stores in addition um there's all kinds of question marks surrounding this whole situation so uh it'll be very interesting we want to know what you guys think because i don't think it's something um shout out to two brothers comics who talked about this but there's not enough people talking about this right now uh in the market and i think it's an important one and i don't think people realize yet just how important canto is to the comic community yeah fantastic story it's, it's not a story issue. It's a printer issue. Prior planning prevents piss poor printing. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, there it is, guys. There's a three up, three down for this week. Let us know your comments. Let us know what you guys also think is up. What do you think is down? With that being said, this is Brian Jack with Submens Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.